Hey everybody, I think we are live now. It says my meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Let me just check my settings, make sure that my microphone is working. It says it is, video seems to be working. Be nice if somebody could just um, say something to let me know that you can hear me. I can check my Facebook page out. Okay, so um, I am Ron Kanner, one of the board members of Shilano TV. Uh, here in Israel, and there's been some breaking news today. Um, I want to uh, start by saying last Wednesday, and I'm just going to run to my Facebook page real quick and see if anybody is commenting to say that they can hear me, because there's nothing worse than doing this for a half hour and then finding out that nobody can hear you. So I'm waiting for one person to just confirm of the 13 amazing people watching, um, could one of you just, yep, I see a thumbs up, way to go. I received that thumbs up. So last Wednesday, I sent out an email uh, with what I thought was really good news, which is that we had not heard back from the regulatory commission. Uh, we had been told, or at least strongly, it was hinted to us that everybody was happy that this issue had gone quiet and we had our channel, wasn't a lot of news being made in Israel about it. Nobody was really talking about it in that as long as we didn't make a huge big deal about it, that they weren't kind of don't ask, don't tell. And you know what? We're, we're not in this to make headlines. We're in this to share our stories about Yeshua on cable TV. So we were happy with that. And then the very next day, we got an 18-page letter uh, from a man by the name of Asher Bitan. He's the... Uh, outgoing chairman of the board of the Israel Regulatory Commission on Cable TV and Satellite TV. Okay, so this in this 18-page letter, he informed us of several things, and I, I, I think they sent out a press release this morning to news outlets. They didn't send me one. That would have been nice. We are a news outlet but they didn't send me one. Um, but suddenly I began to read headlines in uh, some of the Israeli online newspapers. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, Israel pulls plug on God TV. Evangelical channel, spreading gospel of Jesus to Jews. Israel regulatory authorities say God TV, one of the world's largest Christian broadcasting network, failed to disclose the true agenda. Well... I'll share more about that later. Let me read these. By the way, Israel did not cancel anything. Israel did not pull the plug. Israel's a big country of uh, 6.5 million Jews. One of them is named Asher Bitan, and he is attempting to pull the plug. Why am I sharing that? Not because I want you to hate on him. We pray for him. We bless him. Uh, we pray blessing on his life. No hatred here. I only bring that up is to say, I don't want you to blame Israel. I don't want you to be mad at Israel, a democratic country. We have freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of expression. And I have no doubt that we will be able to go on with our cable channel. But understand, this was the decision of one person out of the 6.5 million. And it was, his, it was the last thing he did on his last day in office. He's leaving that position to go with the former communications minister to his new post. So um, Israel did not pull the plug. Asher pulled the plug. And he didn't even pull the plug. I can go out right now to my TV, turn it on to channel 182 and hot. Guess what? We are still on the air. So I'll explain everything shortly. Another one, Israel cancels God TV's evangelical Christian channel. Not true. Um, Israel did not. Get, Asher did that. The council for, this is more accurate, the council for cable and satellite broadcasting threatened to suspend Shilano's TV license pending a review by the council. That's eh, closer to the truth. And then the last one, Christian TV channel broadcast in Israel suspended. Also not true. We are on the air right now, but they do want to suspend us. They do want to suspend us. So here's what happened is um, we received this 18 page letter that said we, we've been dishonest. Now, friends, if, if you're friends with me on Facebook page, I'm, I'm not a perfect person. I have made mistakes in my life, but I don't know if there's anything that hurts more than having your integrity 
attacked. When you strive to live your life, you know, in a straight way to do the right thing. And yet they're basically saying that we, we lied to them, that we deceived them. Let me just explain something. If you're watching Asher, if I deceived you, then my whole message, my whole life, everything is deceit. I am a liar. I'm, I'm worthless. Do you understand? How can I be telling people what I believe to be the truth if I'm deceiving you to get it done? So let's get one thing straight. I, Shellano, did not deceive you in any way. And we'll show a little proof of that in a minute. Hot did not deceive you. You know what you signed, or at least what you agreed to. You know what the license said. So we'll, we'll, we'll get more into that later. Um, uh, but so he said that we were deceitful in the, and again, I'm, it was written 18 pages in Hebrew. So I may not be using the exact equivalent English word. Um, but that we weren't up front and that they were going to suspend us in seven days. So I assume that would be this coming Wednesday or, or Thursday. Uh, furthermore, they said that we could uh, apply. Oh, let me just continue. He said that if he had known that what we were doing is what we're doing, he would have brought it to the whole council. So to be clear, the license that he gave us, he never actually took to the whole council. And again, I don't know what is standard procedure there. Maybe that's just normal. Um, it would seem to me that the whole reason you have a council is to give everybody the opportunity to give counsel. But anyways, he took care of this himself and he agreed to the license agreement that now to be clear, we, uh, we did not apply for license. Shalano, did, we don't, I, I, again, I don't know what is normal but we did not apply for a license. Hot Cable Company, who, by the way, has been an awesome partner with us. To this day, they've stood with us. We've stood with them. Uh, they're wonderful partners, and I'm, I'm just so grateful to Hot Cable. It would be so easy for them to cave in right now, and, and you know we're not their biggest client. So uh, God bless you, Hot. Thank you so much. Um, so Hot applied for three different licenses, and each time I I'm assuming there was new information. So right before the channel went on the air in March of this year, 2020, they submitted their last application for a license. Again, I'm, I'm assuming they did that because there was further information and Asher Bitan, he approved the license. He approved the wording in the license, which we'll get to in a minute because he keeps saying that we broke the license, that we were deceitful you'll see that that's not the truth. And I know that many of the Israeli media will be watching this video and I have sent you the license. So far, none of you have been willing to print it. None of you have been willing to take the picture of the license that we've sent you and put it in your paper or on your website. I don't know why. You know what it says. I know what it says and everyone else is going to know in a minute. Um, okay, so Asher... Um, approved the license and then we went on the air we thought this is by the way the whole time we were kind of amazed as we were walking through this process that we were going to be able to share what is important to us our faith in yeshua the messiah in hebrew on israeli cable it seemed kind of uh you know groundbreaking it never happened before and so uh after that a uh unfortunate video was made uh by god tv that was language that we don't use um and not written and i don't want to get into all that many of you have seen it our ceo one of uh, not one of my best friend ward simpson he issued apology in hebrew and english he felt horror about it it was just an overly zealous uh fundraising appeal but the fact of the matter is is that it caused an uproar in israel and so that caused asher Bitan, and and i hope i'm pronouncing his last name right um uh to look further into what we what we were doing and then they told us you need to answer these questions and uh they gave sent, sent our lawyers a list of questions we answered the questions uh within a couple weeks and we even had a, a expert from hebrew university uh weigh in on it and then we never heard from them we thought honestly i thought within two or three days they were going to shut us down and then we never heard a word until about a month later uh, almost a month later, last Thursday, they decided they're going to shut us down in seven days. 
but they said we can apply for a new license, but we have to be upfront in the new, new license. We've been upfront from the very first time that I walked into the hot offices in March, I believe, of 2019. And they said, we'd love to have you back on the air. And I said, we'd love to be on the air, but it has to be in Hebrew. They said, no problem. From we, We've never not been upfront. We've shared this publicly. We've shared this in newsletters. We share, with the, Asher, I, I'm sorry that you didn't understand what we were going to do. I re, I'm genuinely sorry that you didn't understand, but we haven't hidden it, for, it from anybody. If we were trying to hide it, it wouldn't have been in our newsletters it, that I know reporters in Israel have a copy of. I knew they'd get a copy of it. And yet we told the truth about what we were doing, which is sharing what's important to us, our faith in Yeshua uh, on Israeli cable television. You know, there are Muslims on cable television. There are anti-Israel folks on our cable television, Al Jazeera on cable television. There's a, a Chabad channel, I believe, which promotes Orthodox Judaism. And that's fine. We have no problem with that. But they're quite aggressive in wanting to bring more people in. And so, um, you know, Israel is a free and democratic country, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of religion. Now, I know that the Messianic Jewish community were not a huge community, uh, somewhere between 20 and 30,000 people. That's, that's half of 1%. I understand that. But we are Israelis. You know, our, our children go into the army. I would have if I had immigrated sooner. I've been here for almost 20 years. Uh, I'm fluent in Hebrew. Eh, some would argue with the word fluent, but I get by. Um, uh, you know, we pay our taxes here, but do you know, our national insurance, we're part of the country. And so to say that we can't have a voice is really not right or not fair. So let me just read from one of the articles. Uh, explaining the decision, Bitan said that the channel appeals to Jews with Christian content. In contrast to the original request for approval, which stated the channel is intended for the Christian population. Now, I'm not sure what he means by original. He, the, only, the only application that matters is the last one, right before we went on the air or six weeks before we went on the air. That's the one that he reviewed. That's the one that he approved. That's the one that he, and I'm going to read to you in a, in a minute from the actual license it, itself. He, he knows that. The original one goes back to 2017 when we were on the air in English. That is irrelevant. That is completely irrelevant because it was a different channel that was just taking God TV's feed and funneling it through to Israel in English. When we came back on the air, we were very clear. We want to share our faith. We want to do it in Hebrew. Um, and I assume that's what he means by Christian content. I don't call myself a Christian. I'm a Messianic Jew. I'm a Jewish believer in Yeshua the Messiah. If you go and read the New Testament, uh, for the first 10 years or so after Yeshua died and rose from the dead, only Jews followed him. I'm part of that faith. I'm part of that group of Jews. They never called themselves Christian. They never converted to another religion. Uh, they were Jews who found the Messiah. That's what th the message that we share. Now, I know there are people like Tuvia Singer who said that's just a marketing gimmick. But it's not. It really, I've been living this way since 1983. You can come to our house on Shabbat dinner. Oh, maybe you shouldn't all come. It's a lot of people. Uh, but my wife is a native born Israeli, Moroccan, no less. And if you're Israeli, you know what that means. So um, when he says Christian content, I assume what he means is uh, messianic content messianic jewish content much like we see in the very first days of the followers of yeshua okay uh in the license now let me just read this also from haaretz uh in a landmark ruling israeli regulatory authorities announced on sunday that they are shutting down evangelical christian television station for not disclosing in its license application its true agenda was missionizing Jews. Now, first of all, that word missionary in, in Hebrew, just so you know, it's, it's like a four letter word. It's a really bad thing to be. The idea of a missionary is that you go to another country. I have a Todat Zeut somewhere around here, an identity card says I'm Israeli. 
uh, and you know, uh, the, the tax authorities will confirm that I'm Israelis. Uh, I have dual citizenship. My wife was born here and forget me, go to the channel, go to the channel and look at the people on the air. The majority of them are Sabras, native born Israelis. They're not missionaries. They grew up here. Hebrew is their first language. So, uh, they say that we did not disclose in our license applications and the fact that uh, I don't know what they wanted from us. We, we it, it disclosed that we would be sharing in Hebrew and that our content would be for the entire country. It says, quote, people of all ages. It doesn't say just Christians. It doesn't say just Messianics. It doesn't say just Christian Arabs. And how do I know that he understood this? Because in the license, that he approved it says this and again i hope the israeli media will print this eventually uh uh this is point uh, under section one point two ha'arut miyuad lekahal tzofim b'israel i'll translate that for you the channel is targeting the audience of israeli viewers or viewers in israel it says nowhere in there that we are targeting just believers, just Messianics or just Christian Arabs. It says the whole country in Israel. Furthermore, it says in 1.5 that I won't read you the whole thing in Hebrew, but it says that um, the channel is different from what is uh, aired all over the, uh, the rest of the world, which is in English. And then it says that, let me read this last part, V'mishalev tochen yehudei lekahal Israel. It says that we are combining content targeted for an audience in Israel, as opposed to other countries. Nowhere is the word Nutzlim in terms of who were is our targeted audience. Nutzlim means Christian in Hebrew. It's not in there, Asher. You know it's not in there. Certainly you've read this. Now it does say at the beginning, I want to be completely clear, I searched this document for the word notzli, and it does say that the content would be Christian content, uh, token notzli, I can't find it right now, but I'm pretty sure I read it in there. Um, da, 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 da. Maybe it's not in there, I think it's in there. I'm pretty sure it's in there, but it says the target audience is the whole country. Nowhere did we ever deceive anyone. Nowhere did it ever say that we, and by the way, how could you do that? How could you have a cable TV channel uh, uh, that targets a group of people? Now, again, to be completely transparent, I think what he means is that the content would be something that only Christian viewers or Messianic viewers or Christian Arabs would want to watch. Uh, and the fact that we actually share our stories on there is what's uh, offensive to him. Okay, so I wanna make this point. This is the point I'm trying to make, is that we have been honest, we have been upfront, it is not fair, it is not right, it is dishonest to say that we have deceived, that we, that we have broken the agreement. The agreement says right there, right there in black and white, that our audience is all Israel, that there would be specific content suitable for Israelis. It's in there. And then it also says Israelis of all ages in the application. So what are we going to do now? He's asking us to submit a new application, as I mentioned before, and we're going to do that. By the way, I didn't want to make this video. I didn't want to respond. On Thursday night, when we got this, we, we got together with our board uh, and we said, you know what, let's not make a lot of noise about this. If they're asking us to apply for a new license, let's do it. Uh, they're not making noise. Let's not make noise. Let's just, and believe me, what I went through a month ago, uh, I wasn't looking forward to go, going through again. Um, but here we are. It's okay. There's grace. I would appreciate your prayers for the whole Shalano team uh, here in Israel. Pray for protection as well. While the vast majority of Israelis and even Orthodox Jews would never resort to violence, there's a small segment uh, that are really, really not happy with us. So we do appreciate your prayers for protection and blessing and grace to uh, continue forward. 
So the, uh, we said together, our board, that, you know what? We're going to keep quiet. We're not going to make a big deal. We're not going to use this for publicity. Let's just submit a new. Uh, first, we're going to appeal the seven-day decision, which I'm, I believe HOTS lawyers, HOTS the name of the cable company, I believe they did that today, basically asking to keep us on the air until we've submitted a new application, which we'll do very quickly, and then give the council time to discuss it and make a decision. Then if they decide that, you know, they want to give us a license, great. We just continue. If they decide they don't want to give us a license, well, then we'll have to deal with that when that happens. Of course, again, Israel is a free and democratic country. We're the only democratic country in a sea of dictatorships. And it would be a horrible thing if the only democracy that champions freedom. That, By the way, can I just say that Shalano is the most pro-Israel channel on cable on Israeli cable chat. We love this country. We love the army. We love the promises of God that speak about this land belonging to the Jewish people. We are super pro-Israel, super anti-BDS and anti-anti-Semitism. So um, I hope you'll take that into consideration. Uh, we uh, again, we said we were going to be quiet. We weren't going to make noise, and then we woke up this morning, and boom. Uh, apparently they put out a press release, the council uh, regulatory commission did. And next thing you know, there's articles in Haaretz, Jerusalem Post, Israel National News. Uh, we're getting calls from Reuters, from AP. And just, it wasn't what we wanted. It, it certainly wasn't how I, it's, what time is it? It's almost 10 p.m. here in Israel. It's not what I wanted to be doing right now, tonight. But I realized our mistake last time is that we, took a similar position a month ago at the beginning of May. And we said, let's not really make a big deal about this. And we allowed other people to create a narrative about us. So we decided let's not do that this time. So we are appealing, hoping to keep our channel on while we fill out the application for a brand new license. And we're hopeful. We are really hopeful. I do believe, and uh, I didn't read the entire 18 pages in Hebrew, but I was told that they said that there's a very good chance that we'll get a license. They just want us to be upfront about what we're doing. Uh, we were upfront, but we'll be even more upfront. What you have seen on Shalano TV up until now is what we want to do. By the way, it's not aggressive. It's not in your face. There's, there's. I don't think I don't, I don't watch 24 hours, 24 seven. But we encourage our content providers. You know, don't pressure people. We're just sharing our faith. They're smart. They can do with it what they want. Okay, back to uh, a few more closing comments. And then I got to eat dinner. Um, let me just go back to my notes here. Give me just a second. Here we go. So um, so this was written in one of the articles. Uh, this is the Yad Dachim, the anti-Messianic group. Uh, who, by the way, just lost a, a case in Ashdod this week where they tried to, uh, well, I'll let, uh, <laughs> there's a wonderful congregation called Beit Halel that they have been harassing for many years and they uh, won an injunction against uh, this anti-Messianic group where they can't come, I think, within 100 meters of them so they cannot continue to harass them. But this group says we're very happy that the communications minister Mr. Yoaz Hindel, he's the new communications minister, and his staff understood the intentions of the operators. No, you didn't understand our intentions, but that's okay. We'll, we'll get to that eventually, uh, of the channel, and acted to shut it down in accordance with our request. Now, uh, I don't know exactly what that means. I don't know if Mr. Hindel, the Haver uh, Knesset, the uh, MK, uh, 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 I forget all my words, uh, star, uh, uh, communications minister, uh, if they, if he ever actually read their request, they're making it seem like they had a meeting with them. I'm going to believe that they did not. Um, but I hope Mr. Hendo will meet with us that, 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 that he will spend some time with us to get to know us again. We love Israel. We love the country and it, it, it just will be tragic. It'll be so sad to millions of evangelical Christians, the best friend that Israel has around the, words, around the world if our freedoms are denied. So I have faith 
and uh, that they will do the right thing. Um, and of course, Tobias Singer uh, is quoted here as well, uh, saying this ruling that shut down the missionary channel God TV is a landmark decision by the Israeli regulatory authorities. By the admission of the station's president and CEO, Shana was set to convert every Jew in Israel to Christianity. Well, Toby, I don't really think that we're that powerful. You know, the Bible does say, Kod Yisrael Bashar, Romans 11, 26, that eventually all Israel will be saved, but I, I don't think it's going to be because of uh, Shalano TV. You know, uh, I, I, again, the set to convert the whole country. Again, let's go back. If you want to know my intentions, Tuvia, if you want to know my intentions, commission the book of Acts. That's the fifth book in the New Testament. That is after Yeshua died and rose to that his very last words to his exclusively Jewish followers, which was about 120 at that time. He was with his main 12, but exclusively Jewish in, in that city right behind me. The Dome of the Rock wasn't there at the time, but they're on the Mount of Olives. And he, these were his final words to them. Go to Jerusalem, wait for the Holy Spirit. Then take this message to Judea. Samar to Jerusalem, rather, to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So yeah, I'm not hiding what we're trying to do. We are taking our message, but no, we are not trying to convert Jewish people. I have never, ever in my life tried to convert Jewish people to another religion. Those people that Yeshua was speaking to on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem, who then went on to wait for 10 days up into Shavuot in the year 30, about 2,000 years ago, those Jewish people never converted. There's not one moment where they refer to themselves as Christians or part of a new religion. They continue to live as Jews. And if you had walked up to any of those first Jewish followers of Yeshua living in Jerusalem, not Brooklyn, by the way, but in Jerusalem, and you had told them, so great, now that you have converted to Christianity, they would have said, what, what, what's Christianity? They, they, they were in their mind. You can disagree with me about my conclusion about Yeshua, whether or not, whether or not he's the Messiah. But the fact of the matter is, is that they believed they had found the Jewish Messiah. They did not stop being Jewish. They continued to live as observant Jews. Okay? So, there are other Jews throughout history who have thought that they found a Messiah, and they were wrong, and nobody ever told them they weren't Jewish anymore. Just Messianic Jews. Now, I know why, and, and, and I understand it. I get it. There's been a bloody, horrific history between the church and the Jewish people. There's been the Inquisitions. There have been the Crusades. There have been blood libels from, from Christians against Jews. And even Adolf Hitler quoted Martin Luther in his effort to kill Jewish people. So I do get it. But friends, listen to me. They were not Christians. They were false. They were fake. You can put any label you want. I could, I could tell you I'm Asian, but you can look at me and see that I'm not Asian. If I say I'm a Christian, if I say I'm a follower of the Jewish Messiah, and then I go around killing people, I have proven by the fruit, by, by the way I act, by my actions, that I'm not a follower. You understand what I'm saying? So these people who killed Jewish people in the name of Jesus were horrible human beings. They were Christian Al-Qaeda, and we reject them 100%. What we do, and this is my challenge to you if you're watching, Go read the New Testament. Read about the Jewish man, Jesus. Read about him. Read about Yeshua. About his, read what his words. Read the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Read his words to his followers. Not what some pope said a thousand years later. Read his own words for yourself. Okay? Well, listen. Uh, it's getting late here in the Holy Land. Almost 10 o'clock. Uh, we bless you. We hope there's been help. We ask you to pray for us. Pray for Shalano TV and pray for Israel because I, 
I do believe it's important because God loves this country. God brought the Jewish people back from all over the world into our own nation, just like Ezekiel said, just like Jeremiah said dozens of times, the prophet said that the Jewish people would come back to the land of Israel. It's a miracle that we're here for 72 years. They have been trying to destroy this nation. We are surrounded by enemies and we're not just here, we are thriving as a nation in every area from agriculture to technology. And we're a righteous nation. Despite what you read on the news, we are a righteous nation, humanitarian nation. We go all over the world to help people. But it would not be good if my nation, my government, who I love and support, tried to silence the voice of a small segment of Israeli citizens because they don't like the message. That would not be good for our country in terms of the blessing of God. So I'm praying that, that our country will do the right thing. And I want to see our country continue to be blessed, continue to be protected, continue to thrive. Hallelujah. Okay. God bless everybody. Shalom from Tel Aviv. And that's all I've got to say about that. Bye-bye.